Coming up at number 30 is the second VR game on this list, that being Batman Arkham VR. I played an Arkham game on the Wii U and I really enjoyed it, but I never managed to beat the, the entire game because I, felt I very annoyingly got stuck at a really hard part of it. I did, however, love the concept and the characters of the game. So, when the opportunity to dive into a VR version of the series arose, I was very excited. The game didn't disappoint. It really makes you feel like you are actually our Batman. I know that's an overused pun or a joke, but it's true. It actually does make you feel like you are Batman. Whilst traveling to different parts of Gotham City to solve puzzles and fight bad guys, I realized the true potential of the PlayStation VR and everything it can pull off if handled correctly. I seriously enjoy Arkham VR and I can't wait to try out more VR games like it. Next up at number 29 is LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. While I specifically preferred the Wii version of LEGO Batman 2, this game I have beaten on the Nintendo DS, the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2 and the Nintendo Wii. That alone says so very much about what I feel about the game. It's action-packed like every other LEGO game before it, and it features tons of puzzles, exploration and minigames to dive into while playing through the campaign. Even after the campaign, the game features tons of replayability and extra content that is sure to keep you occupied for many hours. I love how you can play as both the villains, the heroes, the civilians and the droids, and they all have different unique powers and abilities that are used for all sorts of awesome pur purposes. All in all, a fantastic LEGO game that can, be, uh, that can be enjoyed by anyone at any time. Diving into number 28 is the PlayStation 2 game known as 007 from Russia with Love. This is a James Bond third person shooter game that features both a single player campaign mode and a split screen multiplayer mode. I always prefer to play the multiplayer mode with friends because it's so much fun. It has extremely clunky controls and uh, very bad mechanics at times, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this game is filled with creativity from start to finish. One can fly through the air with jetpacks, drive into your enemies with huge tanks, sneak into elevators and around layers upon layers of bushes, fire loads of automatic weapons, grenades, etc. And even punch your opponent opponent straight in the face like a boss. It is truly one of the most fun play PlayStation 2 games I have ever played, and one of the best multiplayer games of all time, in my personal opinion. I absolutely recommend it to everyone that owns a PS2. Coming up at number 27 is the Wii U game known as Super Mario 3D World. This title is very fun, and features some amazing music. It's not the typical 3D Mario sandbox game like Sunshine in 64, but rather features a more linear based 3D adventure by 3D Land and the Galaxy Games. The game is very challenging at times, and does a great job at balancing, balancing the difficulty levels in all the stages. Still to this day, I haven't beaten the Champions Road level. I remember playing this game for hours with Bobo, and I don't regret a single second of it. The game brings back old fan favorite power-ups like the Super Mushroom, Fire Flower, Superstar and Mega Mushroom, but also includes some awesome new ones like Super Bell, which turns Mario into a cat, Double Cherry, which adds more versions of the player onto the map, and Lucky Bell, which turns you into an invincible golden statue. The game never gets boring and will continue to be one of my favorite Mario games for years to come. Running into the number 26 spot is the DS game we all know and love as Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. I got this game for my birthday many years ago, and I loved it since day one. We already talked about Bowser's Inside Story, which is a game from the same series as Partners in Time, and I loved that one too. This one, however, is even better. In Mario and Luigi Partners in Time, you play as Mario, Luigi, and their baby counterparts from the past. It's a turn-based RPG with tons of epic mechanics to make use of when fighting the evil shrews. Not only does the game include turn-based fighting styles, 
but also platforming and other RPG elements. When time traveling, Mario and his friends can come across power-ups, weapons and items to help them in battle. As you proceed through this amazing game, there is so much for you to explore and discover, and I have spent countless hours doing so. This is definitely my favorite turn-based RPG of all time. Fighting its way into number 25 is yet another LEGO game. This time, it's the legendary LEGO Lord of the Rings. This game is based on the popular book and film franchise with the same name, excluding the LEGO part of course, and plays exactly like you would expect from a TT game. This company always brings great games to the table, and this is, is the first semi-open world LEGO game I ever played as a kid. At first I didn't enjoy the open world part of the game, because it felt so slow running around the open fields without any cars or bikes or helicopters, but after a while I realized that the game offers horses to ride on, and that makes everything much more enjoyable. In addition to being open world and following the events of the movies and books, this, this game also includes a new mechanic that hasn't been in any LEGO games before it. That being an item system, where you can collect items and store them in your inventory, for then to use them in various situations later. A staple of open world games nowadays. While exploring the Middle Earth as Gandalf, Frodo, Sam, Gollum and all your other favorite characters, you encounter all sorts of enemies from the world of the Lord of the Rings, and fight it out to win the everlasting battle for the ring, and it has never felt as good as in this game. Swooping in at number 24 is the game that was once my favorite game of all time, that I played for many hours every day, and that I still have many fond memories of today. This game was the perfect base building game. It really defined the way I look at video games today. If I hadn't played this game, I probably wouldn't be here speaking to you all today. I used to love every second I spent on this game. It's, in my honest opinion, better than Clash of Clans in every way possible. And that's some saying something, considering how much I used to play that game. This game is of course Good Game Empire. And in Good Game Empire, you build a castle and a town surrounding it, and protect it against all kinds of foes. There are many classes of soldiers and fighters, all with unique abilities and weapons. You use them to attack other people's bases, and move around the huge map to find new places to explore. It's an online multiplayer game, and I remember spending all my free time on it with Tosh a few years ago. I have so many awesome memories from it, I could even make a video on some of the most, most awesome experiences I have had from the game. So make sure you write down below in the comment section if you would like to see a video like that. Now we have a special entry. Number 23 is actually a game that I've never played myself, which makes it even more exciting and more impressive that it's made this list. Never in my life have I played this. I have, however, watched countless videos about it on YouTube, and it looks amazing. I tried downloading it once, but it's not available for Mac. It's now on PS4 and Switch though, so I have no reason not to pick it up. I love, love, love Hello Neighbor. More specifically, the two or three first alpha versions of the game. They were based on stealth, performing, uh, platforming and exploration, and were scary as hell. And that's something I appreciate. I love horror games and horror movies, and it's awesome to see the genre come to life in a video game with such a unique art style as Hello Neighbor has. The concept for the game is great, and the execution is even better. The houses are like huge mazes you have to explore to get to the basement of. This makes for awesome secrets, like hidden doors, hidden items and easter eggs scattered all around the map. I can't wait for a potential sequel, and all the spin-off games being released in the near future. Number 22 is another Nintendo game. That being the one and only Kirby's Epic Yarn. The Wii version of course, not the recently announced 3DS version. I can't lie and say this game is very challenging, because it's an extremely easy game where you can't even die, but that makes for some awesome opportunities to explore and try out all the mechanics the game has to offer. Epic Yarn takes the Kirby formula and twists and turns it to put an interesting spin on it. 
It's fantastic to have this one-of-a-kind game. Well, one-of-a-kind until Yoshi's Woolly World released, where everything is made of yarn, even the characters themselves. I don't think I need to explain everything in detail, as most of you guys watching this probably know how the Kirby games work, but I'm gonna explain why I love this game in specific so much. I used to play it with Bobo when I was younger, and I loved the whole multiplayer aspect of it. The game also had never disappointed me in the exploration department. There was always new items to find, new power-ups to collect, and new pathways to discover, which I really appreciate. I can't wait to experience more Kirby games in the future. At number 21, we yet again have a VR title. This time, it is the fantastic game known as Playroom VR. Compared to Batman Arkham VR and Fruit Ninja VR, as I discussed before, this game is entirely based on multiplayer. I have to say, this is truly one of the best multiplayer experiences I have ever had with friends. And it's a virtual reality game. You don't need multiple VR glasses to play it though, as most players use the DualShock controllers, while one person takes use of the VR headset. This game doesn't suffer from repetitive minigames, as you can explore the fun mechanics of multiple different game modes, including a shooter, a chase, a ghost hunting experience, and much more. With friends, this game can prove to be an amazing way to spend some downtime. The connection between the player with the VR glasses and those who use the DualShock controllers is astounding, and astonish astonishingly well pieced together. There wasn't a single moment when playing that I felt bored or not included in the group, as every player gets equal opportunities and the same amount of things to do. The game also brings out free updates and expansions once in a while, which keeps it refreshing and relevant as other VR titles rise to become popular. I really hope this game gets a sequel or successor, apart from the new Astrobot uh, mission thing, as the concept and execution is too damn good to let off. To let go of. <laughs>